Okay, guys, so uh, very briefly, I mean, this morning you've heard about the fractional quantum anomalous uh, states when you twisted them on TU2. So my poster is basically, we studied like uh, the effect of band mixing, uh, like on this kind of states. So uh, the band structure consists of number of bands. And we did uh, basically exact organization, like taking into account one, two, three bands. Uh, and what I show here is basically uh, the phase diagram as a function of the twist angle and also the number of bands. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, the energy gaps, for example. So at filling one, uh, for example, there's a quantum anomalous Hall effect. And also there are some competing states like ferroelectric states of small twist angles. At uh, filling two thirds and one third, there's the interplay between fraction quantum anomalous Hall states and charge in squared. So um, very briefly, uh, we just look at the band mixing effects like on the on the resulting phases uh, yeah and twisted on all t thanks okay um my name is Kwan Win Chen and I'm a postdoc in University of Michigan so I measured a quantum oscillation in this uh, Kagomic uh, superconductor, cesium molybdenum antimony 135 compounds. So uh, this compound uh, quantum oscillation pattern, pattern is quite complex, uh, quite complicated. And so we find we find that uh, the frequency near 400 Tesla and 1, 000, between 400 to 1000 Tesla, it may be explained by the magnetic breakdown orbits. So there's a conventional uh, disk gamma orbit and breakdown with the, there's a concentrated battery curvature orbit, this beta orbit. So, and also we measure the uh, quantization up to 71 Tesla. We see with the rotating the crystal, we find some spin zero effect and the, get the effective tree factor, and which is also contributed by the concentrated battery curvature, uh, which is interesting because we cannot Directly measure the, this concentrated curvature, but we have to use the magnetic breakdown as the probe uh, to measure this uh, effect. Yeah, thanks for your attention. Hello, I will discuss the phase diagram of the electron hole bilayer at two to one electron hole density ratio as realized in experiment by TMD heterostructures. Proposed strongly correlated phases include Wigner crystals of trions and an exciton condensate permeating through an electron Wigner crystal. I will also present preliminary results from a variational Monte Carlo study using a newly developed graph neural network wave function. Thank you. So hello everyone, um, I'm Qingwen Deng from University of Pennsylvania, and today I'm going to show our recent research on Kagomi superconductors, uh, alkaline metal, vanadium antimony, 135 samples. So we first found the biofringence maps, which shows onset of non-zero biofringence throughout the whole sample. And there are three state biofringence domains that are marked with red, white, and blue. And this indicates the six-fold rotational symmetry is broken uh, in the charge density wave state. We have also done like the magnetic circular dichroism measurements, which shows uh, opposite signs of domains uh, in, inside this single region of biofringence domains, which indicates the time reversal symmetry is broken. We have also done uh, the pump probe measurements, which shows the splitting of phonon modes up to TCDW, and such a breaking of degeneracy uh, is a further indication of the rotational symmetry breaking. So that's all for our recap, uh, and happy to dis discuss more in the post session. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Yuan. Uh, I'm a postdoc at Rice University. So the post I'm going to present is about the uh, chiral well condo semi-metals um, in the chiral space groups. So chiral condo well, well condo semi-metal is a very interesting platform where the symmetry, topology, and the interactions are all important. Uh, so the interactions will bring the hybridization between the heavy F electrons with the itinerant electrons. Um, so this is the band structure that we um, calculated for the uh, well fermions with hybridization uh, with self-consistency. And then we can see this one single well point um, pinned at 
around the Fermi energy due to the interplay between the symmetry and the strong interactions. Uh, so the bands are renormalized by the interactions and the topological response uh, is called the circular photogalvanic effect is also enhanced by the interactions. So um, for more detail about this stuff, um, come to my post at number five. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I want to talk about my work on three-dimensional Landau levels, which are SU2 symmetric. So normal Landau levels for a single particle is just a particle in a magnetic field. To make it fully SU2 rotationally symmetric, we replace the magnetic field with um, its vector potential being fully SU2 symmetric. And we realize this through a quadratic coil with L dot S type spin orbit coupling. And I look at these solutions classically, where we can see here that one possible solution is this very special one, where even though we have this quadratic well, the effects from the spin keep the point pinned at one location. It doesn't evolve in time. And this is for the highest weight state. I then look at the states uh, of the quantum Hamiltonian, and I am able to generalize a magnetic translation, which keeps these states within the lowest Landau level, um, the 3D lowest Landau level. And I show the analogy between uh, these two to show that the symmetry operators, which are classicalized, which describe this state, generate the magnetic translation of the 3D state. Okay. Thank you. Hi, my name is Miho Papai, and I'm a postdoc at UC Berkeley. And today I would like to show you how we can use plasmons, the collective excitations of interac interacting electrons, to probe the nature of correlated states in Moray heterostructures. So it turns out that the details of the dynamical dielectric response, in particular plasmons, but also other, uh, other details of it, uh, can reveal a lot about the nature of the Wigner crystal that occurs, for example, in um, more a, um, TMD moiré heterobilayers. And uh, this can also reveal the magnetic structure. And uh, this comes about through the appearance of multiple plasmonic bands. So the number of plasmonic excitations in the system, as well as their dispersion, depends intimately on the nature of the magnetic ordering. And this can be revealed, for example, using scanning near-field optical micros microscopy or other methods relying on optical absorption in, for example, nano ribbons. Okay, thank you. Um, iron tin is an anti-ferromagnet uh, consistent of um, iron ferromagnetic ordered iron cogomeric layers. And uh, a flat band is predicted right at the Fermi level by DFT calculation in the paramagnetic state which is in line with the um, Milky's um, Kagomi flatband ferromagnetism. In my poster, I'm gonna show you how our RPES results of a MB Grove iron thin film is um, consistent or differs from such a um, stoner picture uh, by performing a wide range temperature dependence measurement. Furthermore, um, I'm gonna show uh, how we identify a um, uh, spin and orbital um, uh, dependent band normalization that resembles the orbital uh, selective correlation effects in ion based superconductors. Thank you. All right. Well, hello. <clears throat> My name is Alan Shea from Los Alamos National Lab. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be presenting a poster on. Uh, an old fashioned definition of flat band, which is the heavy fermion materials. By focusing in on cerium indium three, we show that there below the nail temperature in this material, there's a very strong T cubed temperature dependence of heat capacity. Because in this model, we have the luxury of a magnon model. We find that this does not match what we get from magnons. The T cubed is about two orders of magnitude too big. And then we do a survey of 17 different magnetically ordered cerium heavy fermion materials. And we find that this is kind of a universal behavior, um, that there's much, much larger T cubed heat capacity, indicating that it's not magnons, nor is it just a heavy fermion Sommerfeld coefficient. 
Um, it seems to be strongly correlated with the nail temperature, but basically uncorrelated with the critical pressure, indicating that it's not driven by a quantum critical phase. So if you're interested in this, and especially if you're a theorist who has an idea why we would see such a density of states in the heavy fermions, please come talk to me at poster 10. Thank you. Um, so that was the last one. Um, my name is Jimmy from uh, Johns Hopkins University. We, this morning we have heard a lot of story of flat bands in the Morte system. Uh, in this poster, I'll talk about the flat bands uh, appears in a slightly different context. Um, we were motivated by the experimental uh, study on the nearly commensurate charged as the wave state in the uh, tantalum disulfide. And in that system, uh, there were domain wall state from the uh, honeycomb uh, uh, networks. And in fact, the low energy degrees of freedom are localized to those networks. And if we abstract that system into theoretical models, um, it appears to be um, like uh, uh, this kind of band hosted in the uh, decorated superlattice. And our study uh, finds that there are uh, flat bands also supported in this kind of uh, systems. And more interestingly, uh, th these flat bands are tunable um, by some local perturbations respecting the lattice symmetry. So it tells us um, some kind of different uh, uh, models, which provides us more uh, knobs um, um, to be like uh, tuning those uh, flat bands um, in various correlated systems. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jin Tian Shi from um, University of Texas at Austin, Alan McDonald's group, same as Nicholas, who gave a short talk just now. And I'm gonna, in my poster, I'm gonna present two works, only one of which is shown here. Um, this is a follow up work to Nicholas's talk, in which for the, to say, homo bilayer TMD, we, in the adiabatic approximation he just mentioned, we include more and more Landau levels and compare the results for um, band structure, band width, with magic twist angle, ideal quantum geometry, and so on. And in, in the next work, I'm going to present a work by, uh, based on twisted by the working on HB and where there are two Mori systems, uh, two Mori super lattices which interferes to get Moray of Moray, and hope you like it. Hi, everyone. My name is Bishoy. Oh. My name is Bishoy Kusa. I'm a student of Alan McDonald in UT Austin, and I'll be talking about particle hole symmetry breaking in the fractional quantum Hall effect of bilayer graphene. So we know that there will be these two nearly degenerate Landau levels, n equals zero and one. And from experiments, we know that they observe very strong uh, incompre incompressible states at half filling of the n equal one Landau level that can host these non-abelian states. So we try to study the competition between these two levels, n equals zero and n equal one including the effect of exchange interactions with the Dirac C, which splits this, and also breaks the particle hole symmetry, which is something that's also observed in experiments. Um, so, yeah, thank you. <laughs> 